Hi, Gary Cruz here with GaryCruz.com. If you're interested in the QNAP TVS 472 XT setup and speed tests, then watch this video. I'm currently setting up my QNAP TVS 672 XT and what I discovered is that it has to go through synchronization that takes about eight hours. So while that's going, I'm going to go ahead and start this setup because I'm thinking it's going to take about the same amount of time. However, the biggest difference with this one is I have two 12 terabyte Iron Wolf drives in this one. And so we'll compare the difference. I'll also run some speed tests on this to see how it compares to the six bay drive in RAID 6. I'm also going to set this up instead of RAID 6 as a fully striped drive so that it takes full advantage of the hard drive space. This is going to act as a backup to my main drive, which is the 672 XT. I always have to look down here because I have to, it, it's a mouthful. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the setup. First, what I want to do is plug this in. I'm going to get a camera set up here so we can see it from the backside. A few moments later, Here's the back side of my QNAP. I've got an Ethernet cable that came with this. I'm going to go ahead and set this up via the 1 gig connection because I just don't feel like unboxing the 10 gig switch right now to set that up. I'm going to set that up as a separate video. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get started with this. Plug this in here. And then get this plugged into the switch. I'll just Pick any available port. All right, next step is let, let's get this plugged in. Looks like we're getting some network activity. Let me turn on the power. I'm curious to see what the boot screen looks like. I'm gonna switch this over. Boy, it's really small. All right, there's the welcome screen. Since I don't have a mouse and keyboard to connect to the USB ports here, I'm gonna switch this back over to my laptop and do it through the web browser. You can see that I've got three hours left on my other drive. And let's go through the smart installation guide. Now, it's funny, it says this may take a few minutes, but it's actually taken a few hours because of the synchronization. Okay, let's go ahead and put a password. Next, let's select the time zone and test this out. I want to set this up on the router, so I'll keep it as default. Okay, what I found out is that you have to have a, a Thunderbolt 3 certified cable. I just ordered one. The cables that I have are USB 3. It's the same shape. However, it needs to be Thunderbolt and certified. So I'll go ahead and skip this for now. And so I wanted to support Windows and Mac. I'll click on next and apply. While that's going on, let's talk about some of the things that I'll be doing with this setup. Here are the following tests that I'm going to be doing with this drive. I'll take the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test and try it with the 10 gigabit Ethernet via the OWC Thunderbolt Ethernet adapter. And then I'll try it with Thunderbolt directly to see if there's any difference. I'll be using a short 1.5 foot cable because that's the one that takes advantage of the 60 gigabit per second. Next, I'll take a 5.23 gigabyte file copy speed test with the OWC 10 gigabit ethernet adapter. I'll write to the TVS 472 XT, I'll read from it, and then I'll also write to my Synology 1515 Plus that's on one gigabit per second, and then I'll read from the Synology uh, 1515 Plus. Maybe I'll do the same thing at one gigabit speed to see if there's any difference from that to see if it's on equal playing level with the same write speeds. And I'll post a little chart at the end of this setup. 
All right, so it looks like this is completed. Let's go to the NAS management. What's nice about this is the last one had the default of the, the, the drive model. And this one, you actually have to type the name and then the password. Go ahead and continue with the data privacy. Scroll through here and click on continue. So the first thing I'll start off with is the control panel. Let's see what updates that I need to do first. Whoa. Okay, a bunch of windows just popped up. I do not want to sign up for the beta program. And it looks like a new firmware is available, which is 4400931. I'm curious of what the existing one is, so let's check that out. Go over here, control panel, firmware update. Current version is 4400762. And that's from 2018-1122. Let's check for update. And there is a 4409, okay? So let's go ahead and go with that. Okay, looks like there's some known issues and some of the fixed issues are related to vulnerabilities. So it's a good idea to apply this firmware. And the timestamp is 110. Let's see how long this takes. Updating firmware now. Please do not turn off the power. Hmm, okay. Firmware update completed. Are you sure you want to restart the NAS? If you do, it's going to automatically restart in a couple of seconds. Let's go ahead and restart it. Shutting down. That's one thing I really like about this compared to the Synology is the voice prompts. That's really cool. Man, it does take a while to reboot. I wonder if we can get the OS on NVM2. Just restarted. Go ahead and log in. Finishing the setup. Okay, it looks like there's some App Center stuff. Okay. Now, what I wish it did is that it continued through a wizard, but through poking around, I can go directly into this control panel, go to the general settings. I want to rename this TVS. 472XT. I'll go ahead and apply that. What I'm curious about is if I navigate to another section of the screen, if there's multitasking that is allowed on this. Since I'm not sure, I'll let this complete before I switch screens. Man, this is taking a while. Let's go over the storage. kind of goes through I'll select both these disks and I want to do raid 0 because I don't want fault tolerance it'll give me 21 terabytes which I think equals what I've got going on over here, which is 21 terabytes, okay? So let's click on next. And next. And so I'm creating a new storage pool with RAID 0. Click on next and click OK. On the 672, it didn't take that long, so hopefully it doesn't take that long on the 472. I wonder if that's a processor intensive task. All right, now that the pool has been created, let's see if I can create a new volume and go through the wizard. 472 volume. Okay, I'll set this to max. Where does it 
ask me if I want to, I'm going to do a static volume. That's what I want. Oh. Okay, guess not. Then maybe it's thick. Okay. Interesting. All right, so if I go back over here, so it's going through the initialization, and I'll come back to this video when the initialization is complete.